upload. It's all on me. It has been hmm, probably like seven months since I uploaded my last video and I really have no excuse except for life happens and I have five little ones that I'm taking care of and COVID and family issues and so many things that I've had to prioritize but when I do get a chance to do a video or create looks and put them on Instagram, I love to do it because it is so fun. And I thought it's been a while since I've done kind of an everyday glam makeup look. Of course, I do not do this makeup look every day. It is kind of time consuming when I'm, you know, busy mama trying to get out the door. But if I do wake up with enough time, I will do it because I enjoy the process. I feel like it relaxes me to sit down at my vanity do my makeup it makes me feel more awake and just ready for my day so if I have the time I like to make it happen because it's just fun and so this is what I do when I do have the time to fully do my makeup of course my everyday makeup is not these elaborate colorful looks that I love to do for fun this is more what I would wear out and about <laughs> shopping running errands dropping kids off etc this is a very informative talk through tutorial. I'm explaining the products I'm using and why I'm using them. So of course it's going to seem like this is going to take forever to do, but when I'm doing a tutorial and talking through, it really does slow down the process. So if it was just me sitting in front of my vanity, doing my makeup and not trying to film it, it was, it's probably like fully 35, 40 minutes. For me to do like a full face and like quickly straighten my hair so if you guys are interested in seeing how i do this kind of everyday glam look then stick around first i like to come in with my mario badescu facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water i like to get my face nice and damp before i apply my hyaluronic acid by the ordinary from what i've gathered during my very little research hyaluronic acid needs water to cling on to to help hydrate the skin more and make it more plump and since i've already done my skincare a while ago my face is now dry so i just spritz a little bit of this on there to give it some moisture again and then grab my hyaluronic acid i am almost out thankfully i just bought a new bottle but i'm trying to use every last drop of this so i just fill the dropper put it on my hand and then I just put this all over my face. And what I love about the hyaluronic acid too is that after I do this, it kind of leaves a little bit of a tackiness too, which I love before I apply foundation. I'll even do some on my lids. Um, because it helps the foundation adhere to your skin better. And the primer that I use, which I'll show you in a second, is also very tacky. So it's just been my new favorite thing to do. I used to not be a primer person. And I think it's because I always got like poor minimizing primers, but I didn't like them ever because it seemed like it made my foundation slip around my face more. It was too silicone-y, right? So I'm all about the tacky primers. Next, I'm going to grab my e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. Now, I've heard so many good things about the Milk Hydro Grip. I haven't actually gotten that yet, but I don't know if this is a, an affordable dupe for it yet. You guys will have to let me know if you know, but I do love this stuff because it is so tacky. It's got such a good gripping base for your foundation. Now, there are foundations that I've used with this primer that I don't like the combination. So if it's a really thick foundation, I think it makes it really difficult to blend into the skin. So I wouldn't use such a um, tacky primer with that, but for the foundation I use day to day, I love it. So I just use my hands to blend it and obviously wash your hands if you're gonna use them on your face. But I just put it all over, especially my T-zone because that's where I tend to be um, that's where I tend to have the most movement and oils coming through and just issues with my makeup breaking up and whatnot. So I want it to be really good and tacky in those areas. But I don't know if you can see, it's my fingers stick into my skin really good and that's what I want. One of my new favorite foundations right now is this NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. It is a tie between the NARS Sheer Glow and the NARS um, 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. I honestly don't know 
the difference between the formulas except for maybe this one has a little bit less coverage but it's totally buildable so either of them I love I just like to apply some of this foundation on the back of my hand and I always do back of the hand and then dab on the face just because I, I do like sections at a time and then I always go in with a foundation brush I really like this one by elf it's very dirty because <laughs> I use it every day I just had a coughing fit <laughs> sorry I like to use a foundation brush before I use a beauty sponge just so I can really disperse the product on my face I find that doing that first really helps you get your more bang for your buck if you go right in with a beauty sponge you're absorbing a lot of the product um, as you're blending it into the skin but if you use a brush to kind of spread it all over the skin first and then use a beauty blender to really like help get rid of any brush strokes you might have or press it into the skin just to make it look more smooth and like skin. That is my favorite way of doing it now. I never actually used to use a brush for foundation, but one of my new favorite foundation product is a little bit more on the pricey side. I think I'm a little bit more inclined to try techniques where I'm going to actually be able to get more use out of the product. So this one is a little bit dark for my skin because my um, sunless tan is fading, but that's okay. We'll come in with concealer in a bit and that'll help lighten it up a bit. I actually like to take, <laughs> it might seem gross, but I always turn my nose ring inside my nose while I'm doing my foundation just because I don't like to get, when it's a nose ring like this that has like, like little rhinestones on it and stuff, I hate getting foundation in that because trying to clean it off is not easy. So <laughs> that's my little tip. It's a lot easier just to wipe it off of the ring part here. And what I love about this Sheer Glow Foundation too is that day to day, I don't really want too much coverage. Like I don't want a really cakey full coverage look because I honestly only like to wear like a super cakey full coverage um, foundation if I'm going to be wearing it for a few hours, not if I'm going to be wearing it all day. It just feels too heavy. I didn't have to go in with any more foundation. I still have a little bit on my hand. So this is why I love doing it this way. I just feel like you get so much more use out of the product. And then I'll even blend it a little bit onto my ears just because they're pretty pale compared to the rest of me. And I'll blend it down my neck some so there's not such an intense contrast between my neck and my face. So yes, it looks crazy dark, but we'll make it work. And I'm gonna grab my damp beauty sponge and I just gently press it all over my face where I put the foundation just to help get rid of any brush strokes. Get really into the grooves on the sides of my nose and help it really blend into the skin even better. What I find is if you've already really brushed onto the skin, it's not pulling as much product up because you're not putting globs of it on the sponge you're just tapping it on thinner layers. What you see on the sponge is like old stains. Honestly, it's not pulling up really much product at all. But yeah, I just love how this foundation looks. It's just so pretty. What I love to use for concealer is this Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer right here. And it's not like the original formula. The original formula was way too thick and dry for my under eyes, especially as I've gotten older over the last couple of years, I just can't use it without it looking cakey. So when I saw that Tarte came out with this creamy formula that's better for aging skin, I had to try it and I am in love. It still gives you that really good full coverage like the original Tarte Shape Tape, but it's not drying. It just looks really smooth and hydrating under the eyes. So if you love Tarte Shape Tape, but you feel like it makes your under eyes look really like cakey or crepey or crusty, try this ultra creamy formula and let me know what you think. Because a little of this goes a long way, I don't put a ton on, but I do like to do that whole like, I don't know if you guys have seen videos of the eye lift contouring, but this really does something for making your eyes look more lifted. So I've been really into doing that now. And then I put a little dab on the sides of my nose and then on the tip, down the bridge, a little bit on the forehead and the chin. And 
that is it. I don't like to use any more concealer than that because this stuff is full, full coverage. So I always blend out the chin and the nose and the forehead first because I like to let that concealer sit on my under eyes first. Um, sometimes I will come in, oh, why am I doing that? See, I'm distracting myself. Um, sometimes I do like to come in with a brush first before I use the sponge to like this little AOA studio brush. Sometimes I like to use that to blend my under eyes first, which I will do. I think it just, it, it spreads it out better and you get a little bit better coverage, just like with the foundation. I'm not as worried about it with my chin and my nose and stuff because I don't need as full of a coverage there. I do have a cute little zit up on the forehead that I want to cover up a little bit. My hair will cover that when I put it down though, so I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, I just feel like I get a little bit better coverage under the eyes when I use this first. And I just like to press the concealer in with this brush first. And then I like to brush it up so you get that lift like this. And then whatever is left on that brush, I'll bring it up onto my lid just to, as a base for eyeshadow that I'm going to do and then I again will come in with my damp beauty sponge and just use it to press that concealer in everywhere where I just spread it with the brush a little bit on my lid I forgot to do that with the brush Let's see if there's any left on here there we go and That's it. I just love how this looks on the skin. It looks so good. Now to set my under eyes, I love this Revlon Color Stay Pressed Translucent Powder. I don't like to set my under eyes too heavily anymore because I do get really dry under there, but I definitely feel like I need to set to not crease too. So I just do a really light set. First, I'm gonna go over my lid and my under eye area just to make sure I'm not creasing. And then I'm going to dip into that powder and just lightly press that all over my under eye area and my lid so that doesn't crease as well. And one little trick if you have like pretty intense forehead wrinkles like me is I will pull the skin taut like that and then press the concealer and foundation in and then I'll really quickly grab that powder and just lightly set that area and that helps it from creasing as much because if I don't do this then I feel like it accentuates those those wrinkles more and that just helps it not move so that's my little trick for those of you who have very expressive eyebrows and intense forehead wrinkles like me then I'll come in with another just fluffy brush like this. This is the AOA Studio 528. And I'll grab some more of that powder and just lightly set the rest of my face. Don't do too much of it. I just want to make sure that it's set enough to where I can really easily blend my contour and blush and bronzer and all of that later on. I'm going to go ahead and do my eyebrows next just because I like to have those done before I do my eyes. My eyebrows are, I am like minimal when it comes to them. I want the easiest way to get them done quickly. And I just use this, the Brow Gal Convertible Brow in 02. It's broken, but I love to use this middle shade right here to just fill in my brows. Easy peasy. No fuss about it because really this is one of my least favorite things to do ever. So I always start at the bottom of my brow first, just to kind of like create a shape and then bring it out a little bit for the tail. And once I've got that part done, then I'll go ahead and kind of start in the middle of the brow at the top and brush up if I need to. 
hand. I eyeball it, but I used to have to do this like every day. I like my arch to be um, lined up with my nostril and my pupil. So about right there. But like I said, now that I've done it so many times, I can just eyeball where it's supposed to be. And so I'll do a little arch here and then curve down to meet that tail. And I don't know what it is about me just like loving using powder and that's it these days, but I just like a softer brow. I'm not really a big fan of a super intense brow anymore. I just want it soft, easy, that's it. And then what I do is I don't add any more product onto this because I want the front to be lighter. I'll turn it sideways like this so it's standing up and I will just take whatever product's over here and kind of push it forward so that it's got like a nice natural fade there. Just feel like that's, that's the easiest way to do it. And look at that brow. I feel like it looks great. I'll brush through it a little bit to soften it up more if I feel like I need to, but really like, that's, that's a pretty good looking brow, right? And it was easy. And then to use instead of eyebrow gel, I like to use the Got To Be Glued Styling Spiking Glue. I just get this on Amazon. You only need a small little container like this and it'll last you literally forever because you use the tiniest amount on your eyebrows. But I love this stuff because it literally keeps my eyebrows from moving all day. So literally just the tiniest amount. I'll even brush some of that off because a little goes a very long way. And then what I like to do is I like to brush my eyebrows up more in the front. I'm even bringing them kind of forward a bit and then kind of gradually turn them as I'm going towards my tail to the side. like that. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my KVD Beauty Shade and Light Contour Palette because that's what I like to use for my crease. Um, I just like a really natural contoured eye for a simple everyday thing. So I like to grab a combination of these two shades right here in the palette, tap it off, and then I just use this to add some definition to my crease kind of blending it up into the brow bone area. And I will take it kind of out a little bit instead of bringing it down towards my outer corner just to give a more lifted look to my eye. And I really don't use much more than that, honestly. I don't want it to be too crazy. Just like I said, want to add a little bit of definition there. And then I'll bring it in like this to my nose because it kind of helps blend into the nose contour that I'm going to be doing here in a minute. I'll even take a little bit and kind of use it to bronze up right in front of there. And don't worry, I'll soften it up a bit. But it's really going to help to add to that like lifted look of the eye. And I know this looks super crazy, but I will use my sponge here in a minute to soften that up. And I'll take my sponge and I'll just really lightly kind of dab that area and see how it already just like softens it so it's not so harsh right there. It looks a little bit more blended and natural, like a natural shadow, which is what I want. And then I'll go ahead and just use the same um, same, oh, I forgot to say what this was. This is the Moda Pro, I don't even know what number. It's the, oh, BMX 430 crease brush. I use the same one to contour my nose. And so what I do is I just start where I brought that in and then just lightly go along the sides of my nose here. But I don't wanna go too far down because that will actually make my nose look whiter. So I'll go ahead and bronze up the side. I do have a little bit of a bump here, so I do like to bring it in a little bit more right there just to kind of create an illusion that it's less bumpy. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So if I follow like the, the actual bump of my nose, like you see over here, um, it 
emphasizes it. So what I want to do to kind of distract from that is just to bring the contour in a little bit more towards the center and it cancels out that bump. You see what I'm talking about? So, and this I know it looks super intense, but I will be softening it up in a minute. And then what I like to do is put a little bit on the tip there just to make the nose look more upturned. And then I do a little line right there. So it gives the cute little like buttony look to the nose. I just love that. Do I do this every day? No, but <laughs> sometimes I like to because I just think it's so stinking cute. And then I will take the sponge again and I will just lightly dab in to where I put that contour just to help soften it up, make it look less harsh. I find that this is the easiest way to do that. And I will also come in with these shades in a little bit. I'll show you what I like to do to clean up the sides here to make it look even more thin and also to highlight my under eyes. But for now, I'm really happy with how that looks. I'm just lately really into doing a super subtle uh, brown wing liner. Um, I just love the way it looks. To do that, I'm going to grab this. I don't even know. I don't even know what brand this is anymore. It's so worn off, but it's just a really flat brush like this. It makes it easy to create a wing liner. And then I'm taking this Pro Sculptor palette by Pure Cosmetics. And I'm going to grab this darkest brown shade right here. This is um, a contour palette. It's just a little too dark for me, but I love using it for eyeshadows. These colors are beautiful. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here on the outer corner and kind of follow my natural lash line. And I just like to stamp it where I want it. And that's about, that's about as far up as I like to go there. And I'm just creating the outline of it first. And so what I'm going to do is I like to make the wing kind of start about right in the middle of my eye there. And then I keep my eye relaxed. So if you're someone who has downturned hooded eyes, this is just a trick that is a game changer. Keep your eye relaxed and just go right over that fold so that it doesn't get covered up by your fold. And when that happens, when your fold goes over, it actually makes it look more droopy. So this is kind of what I do to keep that from happening. Everyone's like, I think naturally inclined to go like this. And if you lift your eye and you do it, it's going to be like super droopy. But if you keep it relaxed, you can see the guide still. And then I'll lift my brow up and kind of connect it and fill it in. I want it there. We'll take this small blending brush by Lux. It's the Lexi 207, just a small little blending brush like this. And then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grab any more product. I'm just gonna use this to blend the edges of that so that it's just softer. And you'll be able to see the difference between the two here in a second. But just look how much softer and less harsh that is. That is what I want. Now, the lashes that I love to use are these two. It's, it's a toss between these two. What I love about these lashes is that they're long and wispy and dramatic, which is what I'm all about. Um, these are Dell Wispy Lashes are a little bit thicker. There's more lashes on the band than these ones. Um, I think I'm gonna use these ones today, but I do love these ones as well. It's kind of a toss up between the two, just depending on what I'm feeling that day. I do have a lash tutorial. So it's a, it's a tutorial basically how I apply lashes on my eye shape, um, but it's very detailed and I give you lots of tips and tricks that work for me um, to apply the lashes and make them look more natural and blend with your um, natural lashes better. So I will leave that stamp up here so you guys can go check that out if you're interested. But for the sake of making this video a little bit less long, we're just gonna go straight to the next step. I don't know what it is about just doing a really subtle 
brown wing and then that highlighting with the concealer but it just does something for my eyes and I love it. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my KVD Beauty Shade and Light Palette again um, and I am going to use a combination of these two colors to contour my face first and a trick I do because I don't really have a very long face and I want to um, draw attention up is I will actually carve out my cheekbones kind of high so like start carving right above where my cheekbone actually hollows because I want to create an illusion that my cheekbones are higher right I don't want to come in too far I stop kind of like about right here so midway through my cheek maybe and then once I've placed the color, then I can work on kind of blending it. But when I blend it, I blend it up instead of down because I don't want to drag that color down. I want to keep it all very. And then I leave this space here still highlighted. I don't want to bring the color up too far because I like that illusion that I've created with the concealer to lift. Just like that. So see how it just looks more lifted and I've got enough space down here to make my face not look too drawn down. There we go and then again I'm careful not to cover up what I did right there with concealer but I do want to contour my forehead a bit so I will just lightly do that bring it down just a smidge now another trick i've seen is taking your contour shade and doing kind of two stripes like this to draw attention down and i kind of like that i become a fan of it so i just do that and then of course it looks super harsh right now but i'll come in with my sponge like I said and soften that up a bit. For bronzer I'm using this Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Love this stuff. It smells delicious. I love the color. It's just perfect. It's creamy. I swear everybody swears by this and it is for a good reason. It is the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that bronzer slightly above the contour kind of like half on top of it and half a little bit higher. And I'm just going to dab it on first just to get the color placement because I feel like if I go right in and start blending I can get kind of messy and it's not laying exactly where I want it. See how that just warms it up a bit? It just looks a lot prettier. Better with the shade of foundation I'm using. And I'll do a little bit around here. I don't need too much, just to add some warmth. And then I'll do a little bit kind of above where I contoured along my jawline there. Just like that. And then I won't add anything else to the brush and I'll just lightly start blending that out. For blush, I love using this Mellow Cosmetics pink blush. It's a very pretty, just natural pink color. Um, I go a little ham on it just because it does fade quite a bit throughout the day. Um, and to apply that, I'm going to use this, I think it's a BH Cosmetics brush I've had forever. Um, but I go, I mean, I've hit pan, I do love this stuff, but I go pretty heavy with it, tap it out. And then for blush, a trick, I think it was Robert Welsh. I think it was one of his videos that I was watching where he talks about how everyone wants to kind of like, you know, smile so you can really see their cheekbone before they apply the blush. But what happens when you do that, when you smile and then you apply it is that when you relax your face, that area, the apple of your cheek there drops. So if you want to make your cheeks look more lifted, what you want to do is keep your face relaxed and then place the blush where you want your cheekbones to be emphasized. So I want it to be like right here, just right above 
the edge of where the bronzer and the contour are right there. So I just dab it. I don't want to bring it too far forward, but I do want a good amount right there. So that's where I'll start my blush. And then I bring it back along my temple there. Oh, it's such a pretty color, is it not? And it looks really crazy right now, I know, but I will soften it up here in a minute. And then I like to do a little bit on my nose right there. And then I'll do a little on my chin area and a forehead just to add some color everywhere else. So now I'm going to take this side of the sponge here where I used to apply foundation and I'm just gonna go over all of those powders that I just applied. Just kind of helps marry them together, make it look more blended. And I'll go along my forehead too and then do the same thing over here and I don't know if you can tell but I feel like that just looks way more natural it looks less harsh it's more it's like almost more part of my skin instead of sitting on top of my skin you know so I always do this and then I'll go along where I placed that contour down there and just Blend a little bit better. There. I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly do my lower lash line and my mascara before I move on to anything else. And I just like to use, I've had this brush forever. It's just this really small kind of narrow fluffy brush. And I'm going to pick up actually a combination of these two shades right here from this Pure Cosmetics contour palette. And I'm gonna run that along my lower lash line. just to add some definition down there. I just really don't like putting mascara on my lower lashes if I don't have any kind of shadow down there. I just feel like it doesn't blend well. Plus what's really nice about putting a shadow on your under eyes, if you have a lot of creasing and fine lines under there, it kind of helps disguise them a bit. So. That's a plus, you know. And then I'll just take a fluffy brush with nothing on it and kind of run it right underneath just to soften it up a bit. Then for my lower lashes, I love I love using this Maybelline Lash Discovery Mini um, Mini Brush Mascara. It's waterproof, so if you have watery eye issues like me, it's wonderful for that. And I love it because the brush is very, very thin, so it's just really easy to get right up along your lash line. And I just don't like my lower lashes to be like too crazy thick or clumpy or anything. So because you know you don't get a ton of product off of this brush, it gives me just the right amount that I want. But if you like your lashes to be like thicker um, and you like more product to come off, you probably wouldn't like this mascara quite as much. But I think it's because my lower lashes are so long that if I put too much, I just feel like it looks like I have spider eyes. And that's just not my jam. Before I set and highlight my face, I'm gonna grab this KVD Shade and Light Palette again. And this is just something I like to do to add a little extra highlight to help, you know, contour my nose even a little bit more. I'll take a combination of these two shades right here. I'll just use the tip of my sponge and I like to press that right along the sides of my nose and kind of under my eyes just a bit. And then I'll bring it kind of right under here just to emphasize that lift that I love. I don't want to come down too far because I don't want to cover up that blush that I did. Just want to use this to add a little bit of highlight. And I don't like to keep this on my face too long. I'll do the same thing right under my contour. And I'll drag it down. And drag it down like that. 
So then I'm just gonna grab this powder brush I used for my under eyes earlier, and I'm just gonna lightly dab that off and see it just added a little bit of highlight it helps structure my nose a little bit more even you can even use it to soften up the sides there and then of course it just adds to the lift over on the side of your face i keep kicking my desk i'm sorry guys and then of course brush off under here and that just cleans up the contour just a bit Next thing I'm going to do is grab my favorite setting spray. I love this Morphe Continuous Mist, especially after I use powder products. If you're someone like me who has issues with dry skin and I'm going to move my nose ring. It's really irritating me. See, now it's not all dirty. My heart. I love this um, Continuous Setting Mist because it doesn't have alcohol in it. Some of them do. So I definitely would check the ingredients in the back. Water is the first ingredient in this setting mist so it's very hydrating i also love the mister on it because i feel like it evenly disperses the product instead of some of those misters that you use that are like really intense and they they spray it in concentrated areas and it leaves your face wet in some areas dry in others i don't like that this is just a wonderful sprayer i do like to use a lot <laughs> All right, for a highlight, I'm using this ColourPop Flexitarian. Love this color, especially if I've got a little bit of tan on my skin. Um, it's just this perfect, like, champagne-y, silvery. I don't know. It's just really beautiful. So I like to take a little fluffy brush like this, and I kind of swoosh it side to side, just right along the top where I placed my blush, and then I work on really blending that out and like I did with the um, bronzer and contour and blush before I am going to use my sponge to help really press it into the skin even more but this is just just so I can be more precise about the placement and then I'll do the same right above the brow arch there and then I like to put some on my cupid's bow and then again i'll place it here on the top i like to come all the way over to the edge of my cheekbone here to and then just blend it out and this is really intense i'm going to soften this up because i do like a glowy look but not this glowy <laughs> i'll do a tiny bit right there and then for my nose i'll take just a small little brush like this one it's lexi 141 it's a mini round brush because i can get a really good nose highlight and i want to put it kind of above where the actual tip of my nose is just to give the illusion that it's more lifted because if i were to put it down here it'd make my nose look longer so this helps lift it a little bit more and then i'll just do a small it's like an exclamation mark right <laughs> right above where I did the little shadow there to make my nose look more upturned, just like that. And then I'll take a little bit and I'm gonna put it in my inner corner here as a highlight. I like to kind of brush it up and then a little bit into my lower lash line as well. Oh, I just love a really good inner corner highlight. It's so pretty. All right, now I'm gonna take this other side. I don't wanna use this side because it's got like contour powders and all of that and foundation on it and I don't want it to darken up my highlight. I'm gonna use the side that I used um, my concealer on and I'm gonna just lightly press that over my highlight. Just see how that makes it look way less harsh, more like it's part of my skin, gives it more of a glow from within instead of just a bunch of highlight sitting on top of my cheek. On my chin. And cute this bow. That just softens it up just enough. And then I'll go over my nose as well. So for my lips every day, I honestly don't like to wear lipstick because I am running around wearing a mask, taking my kids places, 
running errands, all that stuff. And wearing lipstick just irritates me under a mask. So I just do a lip liner and a gloss or a lip oil and that's it. And my favorite lip liner to use is this Essence Soft, I think it's called Soft Contouring Lip Liner. It's in the shade Sucker for Gray, but it's like a, it's weird this is Sucker for Gray because it's, it's a very, it's like a cool toned berry almost. I just love this color because my lips are more of a cool tone and so it really it's like a couple shades darker than my natural lip color which is what I want when I want to make my um, lips look a little bit bigger and more defined so I'll go ahead and line my lips but see how it's like it's my lip color but a little bit darker that's why I love this shade overlining just the tip a bit and that's it. I actually have pretty full lips so I don't feel like I need to really overline them that much. All right so I have my lip liner on. See it's like barely noticeable because it really is close to the color of my lips. I love it. And then I like to use my Morphe Glassified Lip Oil just because it's super hydrating and I love the way it feels and oh, I cannot remember what the shade is. Mirror Mirror is what it's called. It's got a little bit of a pink to it, which I like. And I just run that right over my lips. There we go. All right, guys, that is it for my everyday glam makeup look. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And if you have a similar skin texture, if you're a similar age to me, you have similar problems with your skin, I hope you found this helpful. And most of all, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hopefully I'll upload again before another seven months passes. <laughs> But yes, please hit that notification bell so you can stay updated when I do upload my next video. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.